What's up guys, so in this video I am actually going to talk about a couple of things that I regret so far from playing this game. Um, and it's not necessarily about me shitting on the game saying, oh man, I hate playing this game because I really enjoyed this game. Um, it has a lot of fun elements, but there's just a, a couple of things that I personally uh, did that I, I found like I, if I were to actually play this game again at some point, I'm definitely not going to do them. Like I genuinely regret doing them uh, in my first playthrough. And hopefully some of you guys that maybe just picked up the game or are, well, let's say like 10 hours in, can still make sure you avoid these mistakes that I've made. So these three regrets. Now for me, arguably the first and also one of the biggest ones, it'll have to be skills. So as you can see, let me actually go back real quick. I'm level 72 at the moment. Um, there is like an achievement for when you get to 100. I'm not sure if that's the cap, but let's, I'm just gonna assume that it will be level 100. Uh, now there are, I think like, I don't know, well, a lot of skill points that you can get. I think you're at some point just kind of locked out. Also, leveling takes a very long time unless you use a certain method. Um, there's a couple of ones that um, I have also used. There's a killing one where you keep killing these like kind of rough animals. It's a very dense area where you have a lot of these tough to fight animals you can kill. And there uh, you got this little uh, farm over here as well. That can make you good XP and there's a bunch of other things out there. Um, might also make a video about leveling in the future. Anyway, for now, so I am level 72. I got about, uh, I want to say nearing or getting to 100 hours play time. Um, now, what is my biggest issue with the skills in the system? I mean, <sighs> so, but I felt like some of the things were just a bit lazy. No, like like I said, I'm not shitting on the game saying it's it's awful and the skill system is horrible straight away, but some of the skills that did that don't really make a lot of sense to me. like. Just for an example, right? Stealth. So, I will say this. In, maybe in Fallout, not necessarily as much. But obviously in Skyrim, the big stealth archer has always been like a like a thing where you would go with like a, a sneaky bow assassin that will just one man, um, well, basically anything because of the, the stealth multiplier. Now, in this game, you've got two big stealth skills, which is obviously stealth itself, and then you got concealment. Now, Stealth, you are 100% more difficult to detect when sneak, uh, sneaking. Suppress weapons do an additional 20% sneak attack damage. Doors you interact with while well, in stealth no longer are there enemies. Now bear in mind, this is the last rank. So this is the best you can do with this skill. Now me, loving and like absolutely just mm, little stealth archer from Skyrim, am I right? Obviously in this place, I was like, yeah, well, first thing we're gonna we're going to do, which is just iconic, is gonna try and make a quote unquote stealth archer, right? Yeah, well. In this game, that's quite literally impossible, or at least it's not fucking worth it. Like, not at all. Maybe that's that they've done that intentionally, maybe not, but honestly, please do not invest skills into stealth in. Yes, it is fun and all, but honestly, it's kind of pointless. If you do want to be stealthy, obviously get a suppressor on your weapon, like I've got on this weapon, for example, and make sure you've got the void form skill which you get from doing the temples when you you unlock that during your main storyline progression whatever keep doing the temples until you get void firm channel the very darkness of space rendering yourself nearly invisible to those around you this works like a charm this is a really powerful tool to actually stealth this is also the only thing you need for stealthing this is literally the only thing you need for stealthing and when it turns off well you, you I guess you just, you're not selfie anymore, you know? Like, because uh, uh, this doesn't really work. Like, you are 100% more difficult to detect. Well, let me put it like this, right? You get detected in about, I don't know, when you get anywhere near them, you get detected, which sucks, but hey, when you get anywhere near them, you, you get, you basically get detected. Their, um, co like the detection cone or the, the line of sight, and I don't know, all that thing, they, it's insane. You cannot 
like compare it to for example skyrim where you could literally just walk up to anyone even from the side and then still do a stealth attack that's not possible because even when they they can they can see your companion it will pull you out of stealth now i know there's a mod where you can make it so your companion doesn't get detected you could probably go in the files yourself if you're on pc but let's be honest that it feels a bit cheatish to me right outside of sneaking not really working without any modding or stuff like that tinkering with the files your suppressed weapons do an extra an extra 20 percent sneak attack damage it's not that great now the next one is an elite skill so you can only get this after i think it's like 10 12 15 skills like you need to put a lot of skill points in at least i think it's like 13 skills you need to put in um i mean let me kind of put two one in there two in there so that will be three and then obviously you need an extra how many nine so yeah 12. Okay, but keep in mind 12 skills in this tree until you even unlock this now you're no longer set off enemy mines and then this is the big one you do 2.5 normal damage and your melee goes to four your sneak does three 3.5 four oh you might wonder why did i not even read out your melee sneak attacks to 10 percent more oh the, oh That's the next thing that I wanted to say. If you were like me, heh, yeah, this is this is definitely I really regretted this one. Um, if you're like me, you're like, oh, stealth archer is cool, but what if I could make a space ninja, right? <laughs> Little space ninja turtle, am I right? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Don't, don't, don't bother. D please, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. You could tell that I I I went for this and straight with like, nah, I'm good because. Going into dueling, going into... Like, first of all, the pests are not great. So the melee weapons do 25% more. You, you think, oh, wow, quarter more. That is a lot. And then take 10... Oh, that's good. And then make you run faster. You get more melee damage again. And then they even heal you. So you have like... Oh, in my head as well, this sounded very good. Especially with, with having a lot more health. Which this is actually really strong regardless. But having extra health... Having that bit of stealth, like 10, 10 times stealth damage. What? That's crazy. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so remember, remember, it's easy maths, right? So imagine you've got a gun that does, let's say, 300 damage per bullet. Uh, okay. Pretty nice, right? Um, now, imagine that at that same tier and level as that gun doing 300 damage a shot at range, right? You, you, you Let's say you got... Uh, 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 like a like a sword or a katana or whatever, right? <laughs> you, it's 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 blue, purple, maybe even legendary. It has some nice traits on it that will actually increase damage. Like the instigating um, passive that makes you do dual, double damage on full health targets, for example. That will go great with all the sneaking stealth. Yeah, right. Cool. So, could you imagine three hundred a bullet from a from a pistol, and then your sword, which is a melee weapon, does about sixty. Now, I, 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 I'm sorry, but if you're telling me I can multiply my 300 by 4, or I can multiply my 60 by 10, it's, the, the maths are not hard, bro. They really, they're not that difficult. It, it makes no sense for you to go melee. And that's not it. Let me, let me actually show you, for example. So, now, keep in mind, uh, this weapon is a grey. It's no special perks or anything. Uh, but let, let's take a look at the DPS. 8, right? 811 DPS pretty nice for a full automatic assault rifle with 42 range good accuracy you know yada yada it's a it's a pretty it's a it's, it's a pretty simple rifle but it's it's quite nice okay okay cool now let's also for example go to this sword that i got now keep in mind as well i received the the both of both of these weapons not too uh long after one another so this crippling wakizashi right cool Damage increases as health decreases, which, trust me, when you run a melee build, you do tend to take a lot of damage because, well, you're out in the open running at people. Anyways, deals 30% extra damage on the next attack after hitting a target's limbs. Also, not a bad passive. Cool. Yeah. So, anyways, um, this does 61 damage. Let me just equip it really quick. 61 per hit. And this is the attack speed that you, you got. There's also no way of increasing your attack speed, by the way. Yeah, it's a three chain normal attacks. Let me just hit Andrea once. Wow, 24 Andrea, that's so cool. 
And then heavy attack. Wow. Oh, right. Heavy attack. Woo. 266. That's nice. Um, yeah. Now, like I said before, you can also use this rifle. 56 per bullet. Let, let's check the fire rate, shall we? That's not bad, right? Yeah, so, uh, uh just get again. Why would you bother yourself with using a melee weapon? Seriously, I, I think the when they made this game, they just kind of they kind of just wanted to include melee weapons just because they could. But I, I genuinely doubt if they've actually put any thoughts into balancing this because even though it's really cool to use and everything, this doing 54 and this doing oh well now it's 28. Anyways. Just makes no fucking sense i'm sorry uh it just it does not um especially since like i said before i don't even have any passage into a rival or anything you know I, I barely have any passage into making my um assault rifle that much stronger or anything uh anyways uh it would also help melee builds if you could maybe access or have upgrades for them you know what i mean you can't. I can. I can give this a bunch of attachments, like, but I cannot do that for my sword. And you might wonder, well, what what could you put on as an attachment? I don't know, bro. But you can think of something, like, maybe put a module on it so you get like a little battery on the side, so it'll do extra electricity damage, or you can change the the, the type of steel so it, it it's sharper and it'll do more damage. You you could come up with a couple of things that would have made it a lot better to use, or or a lighter weight of the handle and everything so you can have a faster attack speed they did not do any of this so honestly please do not invest in a melee build it, they suck I, I i really wanted to make a space ninja i regret it so badly it doesn't work now that's for the people that really like, I guess, stealth in. I will come back to some of the skills on my third point. For now, I wanted to go to my next regret, and that is bothering yourself with outposts, houses, and in general, materials. So, while we're here anyways, this is more of an XP farm than it is a proper base, I guess. But I do have got a bunch of things here. I got some uh, general craft in here, uh, cargo, landing with a shipbuilder, blah blah blah. Honestly, um, for the time that it takes me to open my map and travel to this or any of my other outposts every single time to grab some of the materials is long. But then also investing in you being able to ship the materials from one place to the other, like like, it's not even worth it. I swear down, because. Ask yourself this, why do you even need 30,000 aluminium? Why do you need 30,000 helium? Why do you need 30,000 argon? 30, 000, you don't need all of that. Mike, uh, what, what, what do you want to use it for, you know? I will say this, if you want to make a big base just to make a big base because you enjoy base building, go ahead! Yeah, 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 you should. You should enjoy it, you know? Like, it can be very satisfying, make your own cool big base and all that. But do not do it because you think it's going to help you along along down the line. Especially if you're mostly interested in the story like I was. It's not going to do much for you. Um, like, you also need points into outpost management. Or you need points in this and in that and in there and there and there. You just need points in different places where you maybe don't even want to, you know, invest in. So, but, like I said before, let's say you want to make an outpost because you want to, for example... Make sure you can research all of these weapon and spacesuit design mods so you can actually use them or outpost development, food, drink, yada yada, right? I mean, look at my army, for example. There were plenty of like projects that I had to do where I needed a bunch of materials. And you might think, yeah, well, but if I'm if I'm if I don't have this outpost, right, that can generate all these materials for me, then how am I gonna get them? Well, honestly, just play the damn game. Usually you land on some random ass planet that all of a sudden does actually have titanium. Just, I mean, if you do have the elemental pool um, ability, great, because it's one click of the button and you harvest anything around you, which is just very simple. If not, just stop for a second and go 
mine the damn rock. Like, yeah, it's not the most fun thing, and especially if you do have elemental pull, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier. But I don't know, I just, let me put it like this, I spent a bunch of time figuring out how to make an outpost, how can I keep a, a, a good stream of, of materials going in, so I could then use it for crafting, so I could use it for my research, I could use it for this and that. It's not worth it. What I would actually recommend you to do instead, just open your map, yeah, open your map, go to, I mean, there's there's plenty of them, you've got the, uh, the main key lab, but let, let's just take the one in Neon. So, let's go to Neon. Uh, like I said before, there's also one of these shops in, in, in Aquila. Um, so if you're not that far uh, into the main story where you unlock Neon, that's absolutely fine. You can go to Aquila, you unlock Aquila pretty early on. And just look for, usually they have mining in their name. Oh, mining league, there you go. Just go to one of these mining leagues or mining warehouses, shops, whatever you want to call them. Speak to whoever, day. I guess, sells you magic. materials and then resources, and there you go. You have a pretty well, like broad supply in pretty decently high qu uh, quantities as well. And here's the thing in this game, the prices do not match at all. In my opinion, at least, right? Because a ship costs, costs like, I don't know, nearly a mil. A good ship, a C-class ship, will cost you nearly like around a million right between like 500k and a million now making money honestly i also have a money gu uh, guide i don't think it's very hard to make money when you do find out how to do them pretty consistently and fast you can make money on neon you can make money uh, doing piracy missions you can do money as long as there's somewhat of a risk and you know how to basically minimize that risk you make good money okay but like i said before you don't need a, a, an aluminium farm where you get 30,000 aluminium I can buy 29 for 174 credits. It's not even like me making that outpost is going to be, oh, that saved me so much money. It, let's, if, 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 right, if, just if, this, let's add two zeros to it. Imagine it was 17,000 credits. I would argue that it would be worth, like, long term, to build outposts. 174 for the medium? 29 of it? Really? And even uh, and that's a that's a common map. This one is an exotic one, right? Thirteen of them, three hundred and seventy-seven. Come on, man. Like in the side, this one is a very unique one, very unique. Six for six hundred and thirty. That is still not that much. I'm sorry, and and if it is very expensive for you, then trust me. If you level up, the the higher your level, the more money you'll make. That's also a funny thing they don't really explain to you, but you make more money the higher your level is. So if you do actually put the time in to invest in making one outpost where you can grind experience, before you even really go crazy on whatever you want to do, feel like doing, get yourself a bit of tungsten, right? Just buy it off, off one of these dons over here where you can, yeah. Get yourself a little base going where you can do a little bit of an XP farm. Get to like level, I'm going to say like 40, maybe 50. And then just complete the main storyline. Or not, not obviously not the whole, but just do a couple of missions that way. And before you know it, you'll have 50, 60, 100k credits. Just buy up the materials and use it for your research. Use it for your crafting. Do not spend hours and hours building an outpost, investing into skills. Because this is also, so, it's not like you can go to all of the planets. It's not like you can pick out a planet like Pluto and go, Oh, Pluto has titanium, so I'm going to go over to Pluto, put down a base, and I'll have titanium, right? That's how it goes. You need to have things like outpost engineering. You're going to need planetary habitation. You probably also need something like outpost management or you, you need a bunch of skills in order to even get to the point where you can make an outpost and without even having those levels to begin with, you won't be able to get to this point because you need to at least put like nine skills into this one before you can even access, you know what I mean? So yeah, I know, it's just something that I really regret doing as well. It's, it's, it's focusing on making an outpost so I can get my resources flowing and going. And honestly, it's just not worth it. It's really just not worth it. Now, like I said before, if you just enjoy doing that, please go ahead. You need to, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's an RPG, it's a role playing game. You're completely allowed to play the game in whatever way you like. But for me personally, I felt like it was just a waste of my time. Now, my third regret 
uh, honestly, it's a, it's a bit tied to the first one, if I'm being completely honest. So in the first one, I talked about my skills and stealth in, especially. Another regret that I have is some of the skills in general that I would say are just simply not worth spending points on at all. I will say this, there's a couple of really cool ones, like take this one for example. Uh, while hovering, time slows down and the world moves 70% slower around you, right? Now that's really cool. And I haven't tried it out yet, but I cannot wait to get there. Um, it's something I'm trying to work on now. It's going to be tough. I am going to also maybe try really grind myself to level 100, then try out some skills and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, since there's no way to respec your skills, you are very um, glued to your playthrough and well, the way you want to play the game. Obviously, there's nothing wrong to you making mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. We learn from the mistakes. Would that mean I want to go through an entire playthrough again just so I can? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm so sorry. No, it's really, really just no. Big no. Um, anyways, uh, some of the skills you just have to look out for. Weightlifting. Uh, I've put points in this one. I will say this. Not worth it. First of all, once you got some spacesuit to sign in, you can just put this on uh, in, in the mod slots of your gear and it will do even better than the 10 kilograms, for example, and then the 25. Now, if you are lazy like me, maybe it's not too bad of an investment, but honestly, once you really just pick up some of the materials and you pick up some of the weapons and you basically leave anything that doesn't have value or what you don't actually need, like for example, I did. I already knew I was not going to spec into um, making quality food and drink. So whenever it came to picking up red meat, I will not bother with picking it up. You know what I mean? Just think about what you want to pick up before you actually pick it up instead of just spamming E. I also thought that was a bit like Fallout where you just pick up your like misc stuff around um, in all the, from all the rooms and then you put it into like your workshop and that will give you also the, the material that's how this game works do not just go crazy and pick everything up it's just simply not worth it anyways stealth i like i said before don't and <laughs> please just don't invest in stealth yes yes if you fine tune everything you get 10 con or max consumer you get max stealth you then go into your void form you will do extra damage 100 percent. but generally speaking it's not worth the points if you do not have void form it's, trust me, it's not as fun as you'd make it out to be. It's just not. Um, also, weightlifting, don't really bother. Unarmed attacks, don't bother. I've tried it, it's not that much fun either. Um, and when it comes to combat, don't bother with necessarily with lasers, in cap, EM as well. EM weapons are quite rare. This seemed like a cool passive and, I, and maybe it's fun to try it out in a playthrough but i would have to mod that playthrough to where i do not have to do the challenges and i can quickly unlock it because i'm sorry it's not that much fun using em weapons they're actually quite stinky uh heavy weapons they are interesting heavy weapons uh do you find them very often no is the final passive that great no would i recommend you use no not really they're fun to use here and there you do whatever if I were to say what's the, what seems to be the most powerful one so far, 100% pistols, without a doubt. 100% uh, 100%. 50% more increased damage. They already have good damage. A lot of the pistols have pretty good base damage. Uh, the range of them are pretty good as well. Now, when you do get a pistol, 25% crit chance. That goes super well with marksmen, where you get 15% on non uh, automatic rate, uh, range weapons. Um, Critical hits using a non automatic range without a scope to double damage, right? So just don't put a scope on your pistol and you're going to do heaps of crit damage. You have this one as well. Increase all critical damage to enemies with 50%. Headshot critical damage. Range critical kills. Uh, increase your critical hit chance with all range weapons by 25%. So I can see a little build here with marksman, sharpshooting, pistol certification, armor penetration, where you will just keep one tapping people regardless of whether or not you are stealthed or not. You know, it, it, it's pretty strong. Pretty, pretty strong. Um, now, if you do want to invest in those, like I said before, do it. It will still be it will be good. Like this one is pretty good as well. Scope weapons do 50% more uh, damage while using the scope. If you want to be a sniper, be a sniper. Be a little space sniper. Cool. 
I would highly recommend ballistics up until three. I think the range one isn't necessary. You could do it if you want to. I don't think it's that great. Uh, uh, last but not least, whatever you do yet again, I'm gonna don't no. Just don't bother yourself making a space ninja without mods. If you're playing vanilla, do not bother yourself with dueling. Science, I regret getting anything but geology. The astrodynamics is nice at the start of the game because your grav drive and your reactor is going to be pretty weak. So maybe get one in astrodynamics, but geology is really good um, for your farming. Like I said, you go to a planet, harvest them. That way you don't have to build a whole outpost. Medicine is always decent. The rest, honestly, is not necessary at all. All of these. Surveying, no. It's not great. The, op the optional zoom is not great at all. This one, it's not, it's not really necessary, especially if you don't even go into these two. I will say this, weapon engineering is fun, but, but I will say this, it also makes it finding a weapon that has certain modification on them, more rare and feels, makes the weapon feel more unique every single time, because nine out of 10 times with this, I can just remod a weapon to be exactly like a weapon I found before or a weapon that would have just been 10 times better. It is a good skill though. You do have to invest into a lot of materials and stuff like that though. But yeah, you can buy them. Outpost man engineering, special projects, nah, in the bin. Special projects, actually, I will say this. If you do have the skill point, get tier one. You don't need the other ones to get tier one. You can make some fun things with like the siege bullets, but hey. For tech, I mean, all the weapon system can be good. But if I'm being honest, I like, it's my first playthrough. I'm using all kind of weaponry. My ship is super overpowered, even without having points into specific weapon systems. Um, piloting, I will recommend piloting. Um, although I will also say that uh, you don't really need class C ships. I think they're overrated. Maybe, maybe it's just me. And you might think, yeah, but uh, I want to have a big crew. Oh, well, this is the next point. This whole skill system, shit. Uh, no, just kidding, just kidding. No, but this skill system is so weird. Like some of them. Don't, don't, so let's say you finally get your class C ship, or like me and my class B ship, right? I can have seven people in my ship, a crew of seven. Ah, huh, right. So let's put um, we should put in there. Let's put Marika into my white wing. Right, I can do that. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do Vesco as well, right? Oh, wait, you've reached the maximum, but I only have three people on my ship, right? Look, three out of seven. You've reached them in a uh, current ship command level. What does that mean? Oh, it's this absolute shithousery. You need ship command. Yeah, you can have up to four active crew members. Five, six, eight active crew members. When I first saw this, I was so disappointed because obviously me not having any points into social and me not also wanting to put any points into social because they're just not really worth it, in my opinion. I was instantly just sad and kind of shocked that this is even a thing. There's going to be times in this game where you want something and you might need neuro stri strikes for it to work. And then, oh no, yeah, well, well unfortunately you, you were thinking you were having a stealth build, but you also need manipulation for some reason, but don't worry about it. Cause if you want to do this, you, you just, just have shields. It like it just, some of the things, it feels like you're forced to use certain skills or put in skill points into places. You don't want them to put them, but the fact that I need to do an hour of doing the challenges, then also doing if, if I'm just playing the game without using like a skill, uh, a skill grind or an XP grind. I'll sit here for, I mean, I don't want to say days, but I will be sitting here for hours just to try get, let's say EM weapons. So I can finally use a certain weapon on my ship, which then turns out to be very mid or just simply not worth it at all. Like ship command. It, it, it's, it's fun to have more crew members on your ship, right? Okay, cool. But realistically speaking, it's not even going to do that much to your ship. Anyways. That was it for now. Those are some things that I personally regret quite um, quite heavily. Now, um, I will say this. 
again, play how you want to play it. Maybe if you're also worried about, you know, like actually being, um, let's say, a space ninja, don't don't bother being a space ninja without mods, okay? Uh, if you if you want to go crazy with outposts, please make outposts because you like it and you think they're fun. Do not do it because you think you're going to make a lot of money. Don't do it because you think they're going to be super useful. Do it because you like it, right? And also, it's the same with the, the other skills. Sometimes you're going to be in a, in a tough spot where you're like, okay, well, I do want to have more people on my ship. Is it worth putting nine points into it? It is probably not. Just think about what you actually want to do. And does it seem fun to do? If it does seem fun to do, go for it. Is it your first playthrough and you just want to go very creative with what much you can put in your... Go for it, do it. If you only cared about the story, Please, if you're only, if you really only care about like doing story modes, make sure you got maybe a little bit more health. Make sure your weapons are, generally speaking, strong. Okay, get some in ballistics. Maybe get one of the malicious and make sure you can get these final skills. These final skills make the big difference all around for every weapon. Having more penetrations for all the weapons. Having more critical damages for all the weapons. Having more. Crippling is for all the weapons. Crit chance for non-automatic ranged weapons is obviously only for non-automatic ones. But still, get those kind of skills. And if you do also want to go put points in here, you really like shotguns, but you know, but do what you actually like to do. Me personally, I just regret getting a lot of these skills that honestly didn't actually do anything for me. Um, but yeah, anyways guys. If, you, if this did help you, or it's going to help you at some point, please uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if not, um, I don't know. I hope you have a nice day. <laughs>